Hello, it's Joyful Hermit, and uh, today I've just been taking it easy using ice pack here. But I was out in the gardens yesterday and decided to put on my quote unquote face today. Wore a little blue for the Virgin Mary, it's Wednesday, and yesterday was a rather difficult day. Um, over the weekend, some friends helped me discern that, um, and my family, and myself, that his real presence probably, for whatever reason that is beyond us, was instead of urging me to keep struggling and fighting the devil and go back to Mass, and endure these injuries that increasingly are getting more serious. That maybe he was trying to say, as he has done in other periods of my life, no, and was pulling me out of a situation that really wasn't very good. Um, I really am not surrounded by people who grasp my own spiritual director on several occasions, one time he even put his hands up to his head and said, I can't grasp too much, too much. I can't grasp it. When I would uh, try to explain some spiritual thing that had happened to me in the past, even. So I know it was hard on them, and it's sort of a sign of our times. We don't have those around who are really adept at actual experience in the spiritual life. So, um, and I think they tend to just be very busy about other things. So I continued not to have any response. It's been about two and a half weeks since the injury, a little more than two and a half weeks. And uh, the doctor had said on Monday, you know, I was most fortunate that I'm not paralyzed and don't have a broken neck. So... Anyway, I did have a little bit of anger coming up yesterday, though, just over the whole thing again, and realizing that I would not be going back to Mass, and how painful that is for me, because for the last over 17 years, because I started going to Mass daily before I became Catholic, I loved Mass, and it was my life, and... Last night, then, as I was out pruning and praying, trying to get a grip on the on the some of the anger that was coming up over not understanding and and being upset over what was coming down the pike for me. Um, even after I get better, I cannot go back to mass. It's it's too great of a risk. Uh, my son had had a horrible nightmare kids were worried about me and it's uh, just became obvious that God did not intend it he was not allowing it so um, I was praying and pruning and the thought came to me that perhaps you know I just need to accept this and also be willing not to even live here anymore. Um, because I'd always stayed here uh, in attachment to the diocese and to uh, my spiritual director and others and the priests. And also a hermit is to have stability. That's one of my nine S's in my rule. So, but I thought, well, I shouldn't not be open to whatever his real present wills, presence wills. So I prayed about that and went to bed and had a most amazing experience during the night. And Jesus let me know it was him, but it was a situation where a wedding had occurred. I was, part of the time I was this beautiful young woman and part of the time I was outside of her seeing her and being old and not beautiful. And so I was inside of her and outside of her. But I realized that she was part of me, that that was me. And 
I got to the wedding, and the wedding was already occurred, and I said, oh, but all, all our friends and relatives, my friends and relatives couldn't come because the time had been changed. We were already having the wedding feast, and then later in this uh, scene, I was with this most beautiful bridegroom, and I said, can't we consummate our marriage now? I want to make love with you. And that was me inside this beautiful young woman and who was married. And I said, we are married now. And he said, no, no, not yet, not yet. And then he indicated to me who he really was. And he said, no, I want you to remain, remain where you are and remain with me, but um, keep doing your little creative outlets and ventures, even though they are unimportant to the world. <clears throat> but he says, keep at those and wait, and just wait, and it will be consummated, but not now. So and in the interim, he would go out and help people and lead through miraculous means. That's how I knew I wasn't dealing with a mortal bridegroom. And he was just so beautiful. And, and anyway, so that's what he told me. And some other things he told me. He showed me uh, some people, particularly a woman. And she was not um, thinking that I was acceptable whatsoever and was telling other people and other people, sort of like in the parish, and the others there, the priests and all, they were judging me wrongly. And my bridegroom said, don't pay any attention to that. Just remain with me, remain away, and do your little creative ventures and activities. The marriage will be consummated. So I woke up this morning, and the impact of it all hit me. I had tremendous peace, tremendous joy, which I have continued to have. And I pondered more this dream, and then I read the morning's, the daily scriptures, and they were just right on. And yesterday's scripture, in fact, was very good, because my friends had removed my wood chair from the chapel on the Sabbath. And yesterday's gospel, Jesus said, he healed the man on the Sabbath, said, take up your mat and walk. And for all practical intents and purposes, my chair was taken up and I walked. And um, even though, you know, I can't drive and who knows when I'll be able to drive. But um, so I've been in bed a lot today, just sick to my stomach with the neck and upper back pain. But... Um, anyway, it was very interesting, and later Jesus told the man, don't, um, don't sin no more, or, or what will happen will be worse. And I thought, that is true. It's so true. And I was an occasion of sin for people, those who were judging me, those who were bothered, even perhaps those who should have maybe realized something spiritual was going on and didn't, thought I was sleeping for three and a half years at every Mass. And also the priests who didn't like it, who wanted me out of there, they were bothered by this happening and, and their lack of compassion when I was injured on more than one occasion, several occasions I was injured. So... Um, and just the oddity that there has been no response, even from my spiritual director secretary, other than the very first week, three weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, when she said he would contact me, and he never did. So also this morning, I realized that that was over as well. And there, after the experience during the night, there will be nothing that could pry me loose from doing exactly what Jesus told me to do, and that peace that came, and the deep assurance. 
So, and, and it would be different if this were the first time I'd had any kind of a mystical experience or encounter like that. I've had years of these, and I've learned to discern. And this is unmistakable and beautiful. So I emailed and uh, let the secretary know that um, I had had an event last night that was beautiful and that his real presence had told me what he wished and that he was going to be directing me from here on out into eternity, and that um, my mystical marriage was going to be consummated, but it could, it could be years. It could be after I die. I don't know. So I will wait and wait and wait for however long it takes and do exactly as he told me to do. Immediately, I got an email back. Which was ironic after emailing her several times in the last two and a half weeks with no response other than the one. And said, oh, oh, well, no, no, he had just yesterday said he would meet with me May 8th at 2 p.m. And did I want to keep that appointment, even though I'd just sent her this other email saying, you know, that, that no, thank you. We tell him I appreciate it. I love him dearly. We'll always pray for him, but it will be even unlikely that I will see any of them again this side of heaven. Um, of course, I guess if anyone wants to find me, they know where I am. Um, but I'm even willing to move elsewhere, but he did not tell me to do that. So, of course, I'm just staying, but his real presence didn't tell me at this point. Um, so, no, you know, I said, no, thank you. And, and, uh, repeated again that, that this had happened and that in deep faith I was trusting and knew that I had frustrated him that he, I didn't say he couldn't, that he didn't have the experience. Now Dr. Hare, Dr. H had said that years ago that <laughs> I'd be hard pressed to find a priest in the country who had actual experience with the type of mystical experiences that I have had all my life. So, and I didn't ever want to believe that, but I'm starting to realize that while they have the head knowledge or have heard of such things that they don't actually have the experience and they can't comprehend what it's like for me. And I have to make sure though that I comprehend what it's like for them. I realized today we just live in different worlds a little bit, and he's busy with many things, and probably too busy to take on being a spiritual director, um, you know, because he, he didn't even have time to have his secretary email me, I'm praying for her, or to pick up the phone, or anything like that. I needed some advice on March 5th, not May 8th. <laughs> so you see... Sometimes we have to let go. And it took all this and this injury for me to get the message. And I also had to be reminded even of, of my marriage and how I hung in and hung in in an abusive marriage. Um, things not right, but thinking, oh, surely the Lord wouldn't want this broken family or a divorce. So boom, this car accident and the husband leaves within a month. He did not want to deal with someone who had her health ruined by the accident. So um, this was starting to, to sort of come down in sort of the same way that I was being very persistent, thinking in no way would God want me not to be at Mass and not to have this spiritual director. But he does not. And one of the signs of discernment is that peace that passeth all understanding. So, um, to be continued, and I'm going to be very, very obedient in this. And, of course, I'm very, very grateful to my spiritual director, my former spiritual director now, for all that he tried. And I feel badly that, you know, that there were so many things that he 
could not grasp and was frustrated by. And he knows. I, I emailed back and repeated how much I love him and will pray for him always. God bless his real presence in you.